Hi guys. Now that it's time to write the essay for Purple Hibiscus, you might be finding yourself thinking, well, I know what Purple Hibiscus is about, but I forget some of the details or I forget where to find them. So this video is a little timeline which goes over. Another important thing to remember is that this book has a nonlinear plot. Chapter one actually happens in the spring of 1995, um, but then chapter two bounces back to the spring of 1994. So, um, We're not given an exact date for chapter two, but it's early in the year of 1994. Mama tells Cambie Lee she is pregnant. This is also where Cambie Lee and Jaw Jaw talk about how they'll have to protect the baby. And that's when we realize something's off with Papa. And then at the very end of the chapter, the military coup happens. Chapter three is absolutely awful. It's on Pentecost Sunday um, by using Google. That was May 22nd, 1994. There's a guest priest who will show up later in the book, hint, hint, Father Amadi. But Mama doesn't feel good and she doesn't want to go see Father Benedict after church, which leads to Papa beating Mama at home, which leads to her miscarriage. And that's what starts Cambili's trauma in the book. Chapter four, things get worse for Kambili. She comes in second because she's dealing with PTSD. Papa does not, um, he's not sympathetic, but Ade Coker gets arrested, so Kambili gets a little break. And then we see her at school and we see that the other girls call her a backyard snob and she really only has one friend, Zine. Chapter five, Kambili redeems herself by coming in first place at school. And then the family goes to their ancestral village, Abba Town, for Christmas. Um, they have a humongous mansion and Kambili and Jaja visit Papa Nuku. This is an important chapter if your character is Papa, because this is where you see his foil, Papa and Nuku. Chapter six is where we meet Auntie Fuma. And we get to see her independent and rebellious streak when she takes Kambili, Jaja, and, gasp, Papa Nuku to see the Myo. And this is the pagan, um, unchristian, unholy um, traditional religion that Papa does not want his children to see. Chapter seven is a very important chapter because it's Christmas. Auntie Fuma and her family come over to the mansion in Abba to have lunch. And then she convinces Papa to let the kids come to Nsuka. So this is very important. Then in the second half of the chapter, Kambili, the day after Christmas, has terrible cramps because of her period. She breaks the fast. Papa beats the whole family. Then they go back home to Inugu. And then... Papa lets Kambili and Jaja leave for Ansuka, and as they drive away, they notice he's crying. The vast majority of the book is set in 1995, which begins with Chapter 8. This is the first chapter with Kambili and Jaja in Ansuka. We get to see that Kambili and Amaka do not get along at all at first, and then Kambili meets Father Amadi. Things get even worse for Kambili and Amaka in Chapter 9, wherein Kambili meets Amaka's friends and just acts so weird. Then Papa Nuku gets sick. He ends up coming to Insuka. Kambili is freaked out because what would her father, Papa, do? And the chapter ends with Papa Nuku's story, how the tortoise cracked his shell. The story is very important metaphorically and could be used in your essays or not. In chapter 10, we start to see Kambili changing a little bit. Um, she gets to know more about her papa, Nuku. She and Amaka start to bond when um, she speaks back to Amaka for the first time. But then Papa Nuku dies. Everyone is incredibly upset. Papa comes to get the kids. Um, he punishes his children by boiling, boiling hot water on their feet.
The terribleness of chapter 10 continues in chapter 11. Ade Coker dies at the very start with a mail bomb. Papa starts to lose his mind. Kambili and Jaja are caught looking at the painting of Papa Nuku. And this is where Papa beats Kambili. But she stands up to him by throwing her body onto the painting. But Papa has no um, chill. Mama does call Auntie Afuma in chapter 11, and so Kambili and Jaja go to Ensuka in chapter 12. Kambili starts spending more time with Amaka and Father Amadi. Kambili starts opening up. She starts laughing. She admits what's been happening with her. Then the students riot. Things are getting bad at the university, and Father Amadi takes Kambili to get her hair braided. In chapter 13, things get worse and worse in Insuka in terms of the political climate, but Kambili gets to go to Father Amadi's church. Then Mama appears because Papa beat her again, and she had a miscarriage again. This is not the same one as chapter 3. But then Mama calls Papa and he comes to get them, and they all go home. So the very last... Um, scene of chapter 13 where the purple hibiscuses are blooming when the family comes back from Insuka is super important if you're writing about Kambili or Jaja remember the purple hibiscus chapter one takes place after chapter 13 so even though it was the first chapter we read now we realize everything that happened leading up to the family falling apart papa has beaten mama multiple times causing two miscarriages within the book, he's also put Kambili in the hospital. So now it's more clear why Jaja is defiant and why things are so bad. Chapter 14 is the chapter when everything comes tumbling down. Jaja refuses to leave his room. Mama's acting strangely, smiling. She's not being as quiet as she always was. Papa ends up being too sick to go to church on Good Friday. Auntie Fuma calls and says she lost her job. And then Jaja decides that he and Kambili are going to Insuka. And so they leave. All right, chapter 15 is kind of our climax. Kambili and Jaja are in Insuka, but they're saying lots of goodbyes. Kambili says finality hung in the air. She has to say goodbye to Father Amadi. She admits he lo she loves him, but he can't really reciprocate that. Auntie takes the family to go run up Odin Hill. Kambili metaphorically leaves the past behind, and then Mama calls. In chapter 16, Kambili and Jaja are back at home, sitting silently. Papa is still dead. The police call, saying that they found the poison in his body. Mama admits she did it. Kambili is so shocked, Jaja is just silent. The police come, and Jaja takes the blame. The last chapter, chapter 17, jumps ahead in time almost three years, 31 months, to 1998. This is the end of the book. Um, it is 31 months after the previous chapter. Kambili is now the head of the family. She and Mama are going to visit Jaja. The head of the state is dead, and they are going to tell Jaja he's going to get out of jail. Even though the ending is sad, it ends with hope, Kambili looking at the clouds and saying the new rain will come and planning for the future, symbolizing that the family will be reborn.